He's a panda. You're a panda. What are you gonna do, big guy? Sit on me? Don't tempt me. Kung Fu Panda is honestly one of my favorite animated films with Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2 being some of my favorite animated movies of all time. The blending of humor and action mixed with rich characters and complex villains just prove that films like this can be more than just kids movies. With KFP 4 right around the corner, I figured it'd be a great time to revisit Poe and the crew in Kung Fu Panda alongside his PS3 counterpart, Kung Fu Panda. I love Kung Fu! The film opens on a dream Poe is having, and it's a great introduction to not only Poe by showcasing his true desires and ambitions, but also as an introduction to the Furious Five. It also showcases Poe's humor that perfectly sets up the tone of the rest of the film, while also using some really stylistic animation that looks gorgeous, but also sets itself apart from the rest of the film. Within seconds of meeting Poe, you can see his bumbling nature that immediately lets you know exactly what type of character he is. Poe helps out his dad at the noodle shop, Poe's dad being a geese, and Poe ain't no goose. Honestly, sometimes I can't believe I'm actually your son. You are not the guy. But I mean, he really is though. I love this first interaction. It's great because it really sets up the expectation and emotional dynamic between Poe and his dad. Poe tells his dad about having a dream about noodles because he can't be honest with his dad because he doesn't want to upset him with what his real dream is or was. This film really wastes no time in developing these characters, setting them deeply without exposition, but through natural dialogue and actions. After talking to his dad about following his dreams, we cut to Master Shifu and the Furious Five. Again, a great moment is when Shifu goes to talk to Master Ugwe. Ugwe is struggling to blow out the candles and Shifu quickly uses a move to blow them all out. This is showcasing that he has a very low patience threshold that will later be tested with Poe. Everything feels purposeful to enrich the characters and its story. Ugwe warns Shifu that Tai Lung will escape prison and the Dragon Warrior will show himself. The Dragon Warrior being the only one that can stop Tai Lung. The town ends up throwing a large festival so they can figure out who the Dragon Warrior is and Poe's dad makes him take a noodle cart to the ceremony. Almost there. What? No. Poe gets to the top a little too late and the doors close in his face. And of course he, you know, poses around and fumbles his way in front of Ugwe, who chooses him to be the dragon warrior. Who? You. What? 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 Shifu is clearly mad at Poe being picked and so he wants to run Poe out and the Furious Five kind of agree with him. I understand. You eat when you are upset. Same, dude. In the meantime, guess what? Tai Lung breaks out. This is a badass scene that showcases the true power and threat of Tai Lung as he smashes his way out of this heavily guarded prison. I also love the fact that the only reason Tai Lung is able to escape is because of Shifu's own fear. Because Shifu is the one who sent the goose to check on the prison, and the goose's feather is what Tai Lung uses to escape. Kind of like a metaphor that Shifu is kind of his own downfall in a way. We learn that Tai Lung was actually basically kind of Shifu's adopted son and kind of taught him the ways of the Fu. Ugwe saw darkness in Tai Lung and wouldn't give him the scroll, and that's when Tai Lung turned evil. Kind of proven his point. From then on, Shifu has never treated anyone the same. There are also some fan theories out there that Ugwe not only picked Poe to be the Dragon Warrior because he's a panda, which we learn about pandas and their history in later films, or that he could also see the potential in Poe, but because Poe could be used as a tool to teach Shifu and the Furious Five as well, since Poe wouldn't have any traditional martial arts teachings. We spend a second with Shifu coming to terms with Poe and realizing how he can teach him. This forces Shifu out of his own personal box that has also stunted his growth. While Shifu and Poe fight over some dumplings, the Furious Five go out on their own to fight Tai Lung and it doesn't go super well for them. I want to say here just about how great the action sequences in this film are. They feel truly choreographed, but thanks to the animation and sound design, hits feel like they have a true impact. It's hard hitting and filled with adrenaline, even at times allowing humor to come in that's balanced not to undermine the intensity of these scenes. All the action set pieces feel original and kind of different from each other, allowing for just some awesome moments. When the Furious Five return beaten, Shifu gives Poe the Dragon Warrior scroll, which is blank. As the town gets evacuated, Poe returns to his dad feeling down when his dad tells him the ingredient to his special soup, which is nothing. You lie! You lie! 
This gives Poe the realization that the scroll has no secret ingredient, that the dragon warrior is just him, which is why it's reflective. Tai Lung finally returns and challenges Shifu, and it's not going great for Shifu. I also just want to say that Ian McShane is like the perfect voice actor for any role. He has a perfect voice. Poe finally returns and has his destined fight with Tai Lung, which kind of goes surprisingly well. I love the fact that Poe does kind of so well against Tai Lung because Tai Lung is basically Shifu's effort and training, where we know Poe is basically the complete opposite of Shifu, which makes him the complete opposite of Tai Lung, kind of giving him an edge. This amplifies at the end of the fight where Tai Lung's frustration deepens in his roots, which causes his downfall where Poe finds confidence. Skadoosh. After defeating Tai Lung, Shifu can finally find peace. Well, kind of. I love this film. I've seen it a dozen times at this point, and it just does everything I want it to do. It has rich characters with great action that can balance its tone very well. The humor is hilarious to me, blending a lot of slapstick. That also never really feels to undermine the emotional core of the film. The voice acting is great across the board, but this is without a doubt Jack Black's most defining role, and honestly one of his best in my opinion. The film is so quick paced with no filler. Every line of dialogue and character action not only feel natural, but also to help deepen the world and enrich the characters or set up seamlessly for scenes later down the road. There's always callbacks to earlier moments that feel rewarding instead of being predictable. The animation looks great even if it's starting to feel dated from being back in 2008. This is just a cast of characters that is endlessly rewatchable to me and in my opinion has carried the same quality into the other two films even if the third isn't as good as the first two. This is one of those rare 10 out of 10s for me where I honestly can't think of anything that would be holding the film back for me. I've watched this film a bunch and I've never found it boring and I always find its jokes funny and the film just resonates with me because of that hero's journey that's told really well with a great villain to kind of help set everything off perfectly. I'll quit glazing about the movie so we can move on to the video game now. Oh did the game crash again? Oh it froze up my whole PS3. Oh come on. Kung Fu Panda the game released in 2008 on pretty much every console at the time. Starting the game, the first chapter is pretty much Poe's dream like from the movie. Each chapter opens with a credit scroll and Poe's voice actor narrating the text. Now none of the voice actors besides James Hong reprise their roles in the game, and while some of them sound similar, some of them don't sound as great. Out of the gate, the camera controls I needed to invert, but from there I was off to the races. Each chapter has a similar layout where you collect yellow coins that you can use to buy upgrades and skills with, also costumes, green coins in the chapter unlock multiplayer levels and other collectibles like artwork. There's also hidden figurines of main characters scattered throughout different chapters. For the most part, due to its linear map design, it's fairly simple to find the collectibles. I found almost all of them and I wasn't really trying to 100% the game, just basic exploring. It's also worth noting that you can't always go back to previous sections of the chapter, so if you're trying to 100% the game, then make sure you have everything before you progress forward. But once you beat the game, you can unlock chapter select so you can go back and try to find what you did miss. There's also optimal quests to free villagers in almost every chapter. This is also really easy. I mean like I said I basically just on a basic playthrough almost 100% of the game. Anyway in this chapter you're just searching for a worthy foe. This chapter is basically just a tutorial level. On your HUD you have a red bar which is your health and a blue bar which is your chi. You restore health by eating food and you restore chi by defeating enemies and they drop little white orbs. I played the game on master difficulty which is pretty much normal and I had no issues staying full on both health or chi. It was a pretty easy game. I was however surprised to find that the combat, while simple, was pretty smooth considering. Square for your fast attack, triangle for your strong attack, but I did find moves like juggling or throwing to be near impossible for me to figure out because instead of comboing together, Poe just kind of wanted to use either the fast or strong attack rather than the actual combo. Also, it's worth noting that in terms of combos, you don't really learn any outside of these first couple of chapters so you pretty much use those combos the entire game. In the first chapter, I ran into my first glitch of the game. You come to this opening where you have a big enemy to fight and waves the little guys. Once you beat them, another big guy is supposed to come out of the doors to fight you. However, the enemy music just kept playing and there was nothing there. I searched everywhere until I looked up on YouTube what was supposed to happen and reloaded from my last checkpoint. This reload fixed the problem and I was able to move on. This chapter is pretty much just learn the game and fight people until you fight the boss at the end. The boss here is actually giving me a problem 
until I picked up a staff and beat him worse than the Sandman having a kendo stick. After beating the boss, Poe wakes up to his normal life, and that's the end of the chapter. At the end of the chapter, you get a stat sheet showing you how close to 100%ing the level you did and what you missed. At this time, you also have a chance to upgrade Poe. I pretty much just started by upgrading health and both the fast and strong moves. This ended up pretty much making the game very easy as I continued to upgrade them. Chapter 2, Tournament of the Dragon Warrior. Well, I thought. The game ended up crashing on me and freezing up my entire PS3. After a restart, Chapter 2 is the festival to pick the Dragon Warrior section. Poe needs to find his way in, so you have to clear your way and platform yourself in front of Ugwe. This is a pretty straightforward and simple level, but does help you learn how to deal with the janky double jump and ledge grabs. Towards the end of the chapter, you get to play as Tigress to take down this big training dummy, which is basically just dodge until you can activate a quick time event. It's pretty easy, but it is hard to avoid some of the dummy's attacks due to the space you're in, but it's not hard. You have to collect at least 10 fireworks in the level out of the 16 to use the chair to make the rocket chair, and this is pretty much the same sequence from the movie, but lesser, which is pretty much the entire game. After you're chosen by Ugwe as a dragon warrior, that's the end of the chapter. Upgrade and move on to chapter 3. I will say in terms of upgrade, I maxed out several, but also got at least every one of them to like level 2 out of the 4 by the end of the game. Just throwing that out there now so I don't have to mention upgrading at the end of each chapter. Chapter 3 or level 0 is at the palace as Poe goes through the Furious 5 training courses, or well, I mean 3 of them. First off, Tigress, then Monkey, and Viper. Each are pretty much the same, avoid the obstacles and destroy the dummies and move on. It's very simple but also feels really weird considering it's basically another tutorial level after you've had basically 2 chapters already. However, beat the courses, beat the chapter, move on. Chapter 4, Protect the Palace starts off with Crane as a messenger goose who's coming to warn Shifu about Tai Lung's escape is taken out of the sky. During this scene, you fly as Crane trying to avoid storm clouds and taking out the vultures coming after you. I'm not sure if there's a way to invert the flying controls, but I found it to be very janky, but you can also use the awful six-axis controller. Remember that pile of panda poo that PlayStation was trying to push to compete with the Wii? It's god-awful, but I actually found it to be easier to use rather than the inverted controls, which, funny enough, Kung Fu Panda ended up being one of the better six asses experiences I've had. It's also worth mentioning that Poe's Panda Stumble, which is where you Poe roll up into a ball, can also be controlled by six axis, but it's way worse than Crane's Flying and easier to use the analog stick with Poe Stumble as opposed to Crane's Flying. Once Crane returns to the palace, you switch back to Poe and you protect the palace artifacts from Sly Coopers, and this is honestly a somewhat stressful mission as it feels like it's never ending and it's hard to tell where the enemies are coming from. You use this fire things on these pillars to kill them coming down, but basically as the boars are coming down, typically one side you go use the fire on, and then the other side the boars are now on the ground, so you go kill them, and then you go back to the other side and the boars are on the ground, and you don't really move fast enough to keep up with them. After what felt like an endless amount of waves, you finally reach a boss that's pretty much the same from the dream level, beat it, and the end of the chapter. Chapter 5, Lake of Tears, Lotus Lake has been invaded by Crocs. Crikey! The Crocs are trying to get on Tai Lung's good side, so Shifu sends Crane and Poe to help out. You meet an elderly turtle who asks you to help save their hatchlings, and you just kind of platform around, find the hatchlings, kill the Crocs, and move on. Pretty simple. But once you get all the hatchlings, Poe and Crane get chased by this big crocodile, and it was super janky. It was very hard to dodge or predict which attack would be happening. You moved too slow with Crane, and this was the first time I ended up dying from an enemy in the game, and I believe it was the only time too. On the second try, I didn't really have as much of a problem, and the croc falls to its apparent death over the waterfall, ending the chapter. Oh god, I thought we dropped the baby for a second. Chapter 6, Wu-Dang Temple. Wu-Dang? It sounds like something a redneck would say. Wu-Dang boy. Shifu takes Poe to the Wu-Dang Temple, the birthplace of Kung Fu, to be taught Kung Fu when they find a gorilla army is there destroying stuff and taking statues. Basically, again, it's collect an object, take out enemies. However, there is a section where you get to play as Shifu, and Shifu plays amazingly. He's so fast and smooth with a decent combo move and a head bounce move that just makes taking out hordes of enemies super fun. I did find the panda stumble starting to be annoying as you activate it by running and pressing circle, but you use circle as an interact button, so at many times, I tried to activate like a scroll or pick up an object and just go rolling. Anyway, beat the boss, which the gorilla is e the easiest boss in the game. You basically just take out their goons and their spawn anchors and then you just throw bombs at him. He barely attacks and once he's down and out, so is the chapter. Chapter 7, Treacherous Waters, actually opens one of the funniest scenes of the game in my opinion, which kind of helps capture the movie's sense of humor really well. It's just an old bridge. 
I don't see anything. Because you are not looking. If you were, you would have seen the goose. What goose? This one is pretty simple in a short chapter where you save the geese from crocs and then you have a boat ride to safety. The boat ride again is pretty janky where it's nearly impossible to avoid being hit because where are you gonna go? The boat steers stiff and slow with little room in the water to go anywhere. Chapter 7 ends with Shifu splitting from Poe and Poe leaving to find his way back to the palace. Chapter 8, Woo Dang Rescue, opens with the Furious Five taking on Tai Lung. There's a pretty cool quick time event with Mantis and Viper. Why does Mantis sound like Pete Davidson? in this. Okay, leave it to the little guy. I lost my dad on 9-11. Unfortunately, the Furious Five get beaten by Tai Lung, and you play the rest of the chapter of Shifu rescuing the Five. Again, Shifu plays so much better than everybody else. This chapter, in terms of gameplay, honestly might be my favorite. Anyway, we rescue the Furious Five, Crane, Monkey, Mantis, and Viper until we find Tigress, who's being swarmed by guards. Basically, defeat all the enemies and defeat the chapter. Chapter 9, Howling Moon, we jump back to Poe, who is lost and hungry when he stumbles upon a camp hoping for food. This level introduces a new type of ledge jumping to basically jump from branch to branch where you have to throttle the analog stick back and forth to build momentum and this was less than optimal to say the least. This chapter also introduces some ignored stealth elements where you can sneak up to guards but I am no stealth master. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. Wow. It's funny to introduce this because if you startle a wolf he calls backup so like so what? <laughs> you can basically one punch man these things to death and get an extra coin. Plus you can totally just run up on them and kill them very fast before they howl and there's no need for stealth at all. Once you get to the end of the camp you meet the Wu-Tang sisters and they remind me a lot of the Komodo brothers from Crash. Maybe that's just me. Anyway they pretty much just do the spin attack and you take them out one by one and honestly it's really easy. With the Wu-Tang sisters taken out so is the chapter. Chapter 10 Secret of the Sands opens on a lost Poe wandering the desert landscape looking for food when he hallucinates some almond cookies. What he really stumbles into is Tai Lung's old training grounds. This is a level you could beat easily in a few minutes but I took a while to kind of explore, but basically you need to panda stumble down a ramp to get enough speed to go up another ramp to release a ball. Do this four times and move on to the next part. Some wolves pop up in between, but one punch and man they're done. Once you get all four finished, Tai Lung appears and you drop in a ring where you need to throw bombs to break trap door locks while waves of enemies are swarming you, but it's pretty easy. Close off all the doors and a spot opens with a large training dummy so you can learn the Wuxi finger hold. And that's the end of the chapter. Chapter 11, The Palace, is a chapter where you play as Shifu when Tai Lung shows up and this is so far the best chapter in the game, despite the opener of the chapter basically being a keep artifacts safe kind of mission. Just narratively between Shifu and Tai Lung, it finally feels like it's reaching some of those highs of the film. This felt cinematic and it finally a payoff for a lot of meandering. The actual Tai Lung fight is pretty basic, dodge until there's a quick time event, but it also just kind of feels epic. Maybe because Shifu is just so great to play as, I don't know. Finishing the boss fight, Shifu tells Tai Lung the Dragon Warrior is not your destiny, which Tai Lung lunges at Shifu and that's the end of the chapter. Chapter 12, the warrior's destiny opens on the famous scene where Poe's dad tells him that there is no secret ingredient in the soup, making him realize that he is the Dragon Warrior and there's no build up to this whatsoever. There's no self-doubt. There's honestly not even any scroll. I don't even remember hearing or seeing the scroll in the game like at all. I don't remember him ever opening the scroll and seeing it blank. It just feels like it's just, oh, hey, we got to do this kind of thing. However, with that newfound confidence, Poe sets out to the palace as we fight our way there. It's pretty much the same thing. Just go through the level, fight the bad guys, put out some fires, save some little friends until we meet up with Monkey, which after devising a plan to take out the enemy, ships you get to play a small section as monkey monkey can jump really high and attack with his tail he controls very well and i wish we could have gotten to some more time to play as him anyways monkey and poe drop a water tower on boats after beating a simple boss and that's the chapter as we move into chapter 13 the final battle and the final chapter this is the showdown against tai lung and out of the gate i was surprised by how much harder tai lung was he really took a beating on us and blocked a lot of our shots and i personally didn't think the controls are combos are deep enough to really put a po pounding on him but the fight is broken up into sections so once we kind of knocked him down low enough and health we kind of get a break from him to fight a bunch of enemies which gives us a chance to heal up and refill our chi when we get to the final battleground area against him this is where i found the fight to be a pain in the panda so he's much easier here to fight but the problem is you hit him and he bounces away and does a reheal and you move too slow to get over there in time to stop him i wasn't able to do enough damage to counter 
counteract the healing, so I wasn't making any headway. I decided to look up on how others were beating him, and honestly, it was basically the same thing I was doing while just getting a few more combos in there, but I did notice something looking at other people's walkthroughs. If you hit Tai Lung and then immediately run away from him, instead of healing, he will chase you. Let him do his little combo, get your combo in, and make him chase you around. This stopped him from healing as much, which finally gave me a headway to take him out for good. Skidoosh! Got him. Get wrecked, Pylong. After defeating Tai Lung, we get the cheerful ending and bam, credits. Him? He's a panda. He's a panda. panda. What, what are you, you going to do, do, big guy? Big guy? Sit on me. Sit on me. <laughs> Don't tempt me. So comparing the game to the movie, the one major issue I have with the game over the movie is the fact the game is basically trying to rewrite the movie. In both the last two entries, Monsters Inc. and Avatar, they almost play as prequels, allowing the game to kind of add lore, but in Kung Fu Panda, instead, they just rewrite the first movie, not adding anything to the lore, and instead kind of bastardizing the film's narrative. The film is about Poe's coming of age as a Kung Fu master and believing himself despite everybody and everything telling him not to. It's about Shifu learning to let go of his past and rekindling a fire in him to teach Poe in a way that also helps him grow. It's about the Furious Five learning to accept someone new and to break their rigidity, all with the backdrop of a monstrous villain that is well defined in his motivations and is a real challenge to overcome, not just physically but spiritually as well. The game takes a few sections of the story but cuts away all the character building, cuts away all the character growth, and cuts away all the weight of the villain to fill in several levels that feel like tutorials, wandering around levels, or levels that don't really build any to the story, but are only here to be cannon fodder for gameplay. Poe's big revelation with his dad is literally just a blip at the beginning of a chapter of the game that doesn't feel powerful like it does in the film. Outside of the story, the gameplay is fine. It's a pretty shallow combat system and skill tree, but the characters you play all handle pretty differently as well. The characters feel good to control despite some janky jumping and platforming, but when it comes to combat, it does feel solid as a game. The game did crash on me once and there was a glitch section and I had to restart a chapter, but other than those, the game did run great. Great. Frame rates never felt like they dipped, but I do remember there being a chapter and a half where the audio was kind of mixed weird, where a lot of the right audio was way stronger. Definitely doing the heavy lifting, but otherwise it ran pretty well. Graphically, I think the game looks great for a 2008 game based on a cartoon. It does look like it belongs in the KFP universe, and that's great. Another thing that I personally liked is that despite most of the game being rather repetitive, thanks to a shorter runtime of about four and a half hours, and the fact that it does give you moments of playing as other characters, doing platforming sections or other sections like the boat or crane and pose escape, it varies up the gameplay enough to never feel insanely repetitive or boring. After you beat the game, there is other options of like multiplayer that I never dived into, but there is other things you can do with the game as well. Overall, I think it's just the narrative that suffers the most and honestly is what brings the game down so much in my opinion when comparing it to the movie, which is honestly, despite some solid gameplay, Kung Fu Panda is getting the rating of watch it. <laughs> That was awesome! Let's go again!